Pyrolysis is the thermal decomposition of materials at elevated temperatures in an inert atmosphere. It involves a change of chemical composition and is irreversible. The word is coined from the Greek-derived elements pyro fire, and lysis separating. Pyrolysis is most commonly used in the treatment of organic materials. It is one of the processes involved in charring wood. In general, pyrolysis of organic substances produces volatile products and leaves a solid residue enriched in carbon char. Extreme pyrolysis, which leaves mostly carbon as the residue, is called carbonization. The process is used heavily in the chemical industry, for example, to produce ethylene, many forms of carbon, and other chemicals from petroleum, coal, and even wood, to produce coke from coal. Aspirational applications of pyrolysis would convert biomass into syngas and biochar, waste plastics back into usable oil, or waste into safely disposable substances. Topic. Terminology Pyrolysis is one of various types of chemical degradation processes that occur at higher temperatures above the boiling point of water or other solvents. It differs from other processes like combustion and hydrolysis in that it usually does not involve the addition of other reagents such as oxygen O2 in combustion or water in hydrolysis. Topic. Types of pyrolysis Complete pyrolysis of organic matter usually leaves a solid residue that consists mostly of elemental carbon, the process is then called carbonization. More specific cases of pyrolysis include Dry distillation, as in the original production of sulfuric acid from sulfates, Destructive distillation, as in the manufacture of charcoal, coke and activated carbon Caramelization of sugars High temperature cooking processes such as roasting, frying, toasting, and grilling Cracking of heavier hydrocarbons into lighter ones, as in oil refining Thermal depolymerization, that breaks down plastics and other polymers into monomers and oligomers Hydrous pyrolysis, in the presence of superheated water or steam, also used in oil refining. Ceramization involving the formation of polymer-derived ceramics from preceramic polymers under an inert atmosphere. Catagenesis, the natural conversion of buried organic matter to fossil fuels. Flash vacuum pyrolysis, used in organic synthesis. Topic. General processes and mechanisms Pyrolysis generally consists in heating the material above its decomposition temperature, breaking chemical bonds in its molecules. The fragments usually become smaller molecules, but may combine to produce residues with larger molecular mass, even amorphous covalent solids. In many settings, some amounts of oxygen, water, or other substances may be present, so that combustion, hydrolysis, or other chemical processes may occur besides pyrolysis proper. Sometimes those chemical are added intentionally, as in the burning of firewood, in the traditional manufacture of charcoal, and in the steam cracking of crude oil. Conversely, the starting material may be heated in a vacuum or in an inert atmosphere avoid adverse chemical reactions. Pyrolysis in a vacuum also lowers the boiling point of the byproducts, improving their recovery. When organic matter is heated at increasing temperatures in open containers, the following processes generally occur, in successive or overlapping stages. Below about 100 degrees Celsius, volatiles, including some water, evaporate. 
Heat-sensitive substances, such as vitamin C and proteins, may partially change or decompose already at this stage. At about 100 degrees Celsius or slightly higher, any remaining water that is merely absorbed in the material is driven off. Water trapped in crystal structure of hydrates may come off at somewhat higher temperatures. This process consumes a lot of energy, so the temperature may stop rising until this stage is complete. Some solid substances, like fats, waxes, and sugars, may melt and separate. Between 100 and 500 degrees Celsius, many common organic molecules break down. Most sugars start decomposing at 160 to 180 degrees Celsius. Cellulose, a major component of wood, paper, and cotton fabrics, decomposes at about 350 degrees Celsius. Lignin, another major wood component, starts decomposing at about 350 degrees Celsius, but continues releasing volatile products up to 500 degrees Celsius. The decomposition products usually include water, carbon monoxide CO and or carbon dioxide CO2, as well as a large number of organic compounds. Gases and volatile products leave the sample, and some of them may condense again as smoke. Generally, this process also absorbs energy. Some volatiles may ignite and burn, creating a visible flame. The non-volatile residues typically become richer in carbon and form large disordered molecules, with colors ranging between brown and black. At this point the matter is said to have been charred or carbonized. At 200 to 300 degrees Celsius, if oxygen has not been excluded, the carbonaceous residue may start to burn, in a highly exothermic reaction, often with no or little visible flame. Once carbon combustion starts, the temperature rises spontaneously, turning the residue into a glowing ember and releasing carbon dioxide and or monoxide. At this stage, some of the nitrogen still remaining in the residue may be oxidized into nitrogen oxides like NO2 and N2O3. Sulfur and other elements like chlorine and arsenic may be oxidized and volatilized at this stage. Once combustion of the carbonaceous residue is complete, a powdery or solid mineral residue ash is often left behind, consisting of inorganic oxidized materials of high melting point. Some of the ash may have left during combustion, entrained by the gases as fly ash or particulate emissions. Metals present in the original matter usually remain in the ash as oxides or carbonates, such as potash. Phosphorus, from materials such as bone, phospholipids, and nucleic acids, usually remains as phosphates. <laughs> Occurrence and uses Ethylene <laughs> 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 Pyrolysis is used to produce ethylene, the chemical compound produced on the largest scale industrially greater than 110 million tons per year in 2005. In this process, hydrocarbons from petroleum are heated to around 600 degrees Celsius 1112 degrees Fahrenheit in the presence of steam, this is called steam cracking. The resulting ethylene is used to make antifreeze ethylene glycol, PVC via vinyl chloride, and many other polymers, such as polyethylene and polystyrene. <laughs> Coke, carbon, charcoals, and chars Carbon and carbon-rich materials have desirable properties but are non-volatile, even at high temperatures. Consequently, pyrolysis is used to produce many kinds of carbon, these can be used for fuel, as reagents in steelmaking coke, and as structural materials. 
High temperature pyrolysis is used on an industrial scale to convert coal into coke for metallurgy, especially steelmaking. Volatile products are often useful, including benzene and pyridine. Coke can also be produced from the solid residue left from petroleum refining. The coke making or coking process consists of heating the material in coking ovens to very high temperatures up to 900 degrees Celsius or 1700 degrees Fahrenheit so that those molecules are broken down into lighter volatile substances, which leave the vessel, and a porous but hard residue that is mostly carbon and inorganic ash. The amount of volatiles varies with the source material, but is typically 25 to 30 percent of it by weight. The original vascular structure of the wood and the pores created by escaping gases combine to produce a light and porous material. By starting with a dense wood-like material, such as nutshells or peach stones, one obtains a form of charcoal with particularly fine pores and hence a much larger pore surface area, called activated carbon, which is used as an adsorbent for a wide range of chemical substances. Biochar is the residue of incomplete organic pyrolysis, e.g., from cooking fires. They are a key component of the terra preta soils associated with ancient indigenous communities of the Amazon basin. Terra preta is much sought by local farmers for its superior fertility and capacity to promote and retain an enhanced suite of beneficial microbiota, compared to the typical red soil of the region. Efforts are underway to recreate these soils through biochar, the solid residue of pyrolysis of various materials, mostly organic waste. Carbon fibers are filaments of carbon that can be used to make very strong yarns and textiles. Carbon fiber items are often produced by spinning and weaving the desired item from fibers of a suitable polymer, and then pyrolyzing the material at a high temperature from 1500 to 3000 degrees Celsius or 2730 to 5430 degrees Fahrenheit. The first carbon fibers were made from rayon, but polyacrylonitrile has become the most common starting material. For their first workable electric lamps, Joseph Wilson Swan and Thomas Edison used carbon filaments made by pyrolysis of cotton yarns and bamboo splinters, respectively. Pyrolysis is the reaction used to coat a preformed substrate with a layer of pyrolytic carbon. This is typically done in a fluidized bed reactor heated to 1000 to 2000 degrees Celsius or 1830 to 3630 degrees Fahrenheit. Pyrolytic carbon coatings are used in many applications, including artificial heart valves. Topic: <inaudible> Biofuels. <inaudible> 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 Pyrolysis is the basis of several methods for producing fuel from biomass, i.e. lignocellulosic biomass. Crops studied as biomass feedstock for pyrolysis include native North American prairie grasses such as switchgrass and bred versions of other grasses such as Miscanthius gigantus. Other sources of organic matter as feedstock for pyrolysis include green waste, sawdust, waste wood, nut shells, straw, cotton trash, rice hulls. Animal waste including poultry litter, dairy manure, and potentially other manures are also under evaluation. Some industrial byproducts are also suitable feedstock including paper sludge and distiller's grain. Synthetic diesel fuel by pyrolysis of organic materials is not yet economically competitive. Higher efficiency is sometimes achieved by flash pyrolysis, in which finely divided feedstock is quickly heated to between 350 and 500 degrees Celsius 660 and 930 degrees Fahrenheit for less than two seconds. The low quality of oils produced through pyrolysis can be improved by physical and chemical processes, which might drive up production costs, but may make sense economically as circumstances change. 
There is also the possibility of integrating with other processes such as mechanical biological treatment and anaerobic digestion. Fast pyrolysis is also investigated for biomass conversions. Fuel bio-oil can also be produced by hydrous pyrolysis. Semiconductors The process of metallorganic vapor phase epitaxy entails pyrolysis of volatile organometallic compounds to give semiconductors, hard coatings, and other applicable materials. The reactions entail thermal degradation of precursors, with deposition of the inorganic component and release of the hydrocarbons as gaseous waste. Since it is an atom-by-atom -atom deposition, these atoms organize themselves into crystals to form the bulk semiconductor. Silicon chips are produced by the pyrolysis of silane. Silicon hydride C plus 2H2 gallium arsenide, another semiconductor, forms upon co-pyrolysis of trimethylgallium and arsine. Recycling Pyrolysis can also be used to treat plastic waste. The main advantage is the reduction in volume of the waste. In principle, pyrolysis will regenerate the monomers precursors to the polymers that are treated, but in practice the process is neither a clean nor an economically competitive source of monomers. In tire recycling, tire pyrolysis is well developed technology. Other products from car tire pyrolysis include steel wires, carbon black and bitumen. The area faces legislative, economic, and marketing obstacles. Oil derived from tire rubber pyrolysis contains high sulfur content, which gives it high potential as a pollutant and should be desulfurized. Thermal cleaning. Pyrolysis is also used for thermal cleaning, an industrial application to remove organic substances such as polymers, plastics and coatings from parts, products or production components like extruder screws, spinnerets and static mixers. During the thermal cleaning process, at temperatures between 310 C degree to 540 C degree 600 degrees Fahrenheit to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, organic material is converted by pyrolysis and oxidation into volatile organic compounds, hydrocarbons and carbonized gas. Inorganic elements remain. Several types of thermal cleaning systems use pyrolysis. Molten salt baths belong to the oldest thermal cleaning systems. Cleaning with a molten salt bath is very fast but implies the risk of dangerous splatters, or other potential hazards connected with the use of salt baths, like explosions or highly toxic hydrogen cyanide gas. Fluidized bed systems use sand or aluminium oxide as heating medium. These systems also clean very fast but the medium does not melt or boil, nor emit any vapors or odors. The cleaning process takes one to two hours. Vacuum ovens use pyrolysis in a vacuum avoiding uncontrolled combustion inside the cleaning chamber. The cleaning process takes eight to thirty hours. Burn-off ovens, also known as heat cleaning ovens, are gas-fired and used in the painting, coatings, electric motors and plastics industries for removing organics from heavy and large metal parts. Topic: <laughs> Fine chemical synthesis. Pyrolysis is used in the production of chemical compounds, mainly, but not only, in the research laboratory. The area of boron hydride clusters started with the study of the pyrolysis of diborane B2H6 at Ca. 200 degrees Celsius. Products include the clusters pentaborane and decaborane. 
These pyrolyses involve not only cracking to give H2, but also recondensation, the synthesis of nanoparticles, zirconia and oxides utilizing an ultrasonic nozzle in a process called ultrasonic spray pyrolysis USP. Topic: Other uses and occurrences. Pyrolysis is used to turn organic materials into carbon for the purpose of carbon-14 dating. PYGCMS is an important laboratory procedure to determine the structure of compounds. Pyrolysis of tobacco, paper, and additives, in cigarettes and other products, generates many volatile products including nicotine, carbon monoxide, and tar that are responsible for the aroma and health effects of smoking. Similar considerations apply to the smoking of marijuana and the burning of incense products and mosquito coils. Pyrolysis occurs during the incineration of trash, potentially generating volatiles that are toxic or contribute to air pollution if not completely burned. Laboratory or industrial equipment sometimes gets fouled by carbonaceous residues that result from coking, the pyrolysis of organic products that come into contact with hot surfaces. History Pyrolysis has been used for turning wood into charcoal since ancient times. In their embalming process, the ancient Egyptians used methanol, which they obtained from the pyrolysis of wood. The dry distillation of wood remained the major source of methanol into the early 20th century. The 8th century caliphate philosopher Habir ibn Hayyan, known as Jeber in the West, may be considered the father of experimental chemistry because of his development of the retort, which he used to discover sulfuric, hydrochloric, and nitric acids, as well as aqua regia, by dry distillation of vitriol mixed with other salts. These discoveries became known in Europe in the 14th century, through the books of pseudo Jeber. Pyrolysis was also instrumental in the discovery of many important chemical substances, such as phosphorus from ammonium sodium hydrogen phosphate NH4 sodium hydrogen phosphate in concentrated urine and oxygen from mercuric oxide and various nitrates. See also